Hello everyone, today I will show you my opinion on the current method of Vanguard Zero GDP. I will show you a tier list about what is the most relevant and the most popular decks within the current method of Vanguard Zero GDP. And this tier list is made by at Cairo Start with, so make sure you follow him at Twitter. Alright, so let's get into it. Uh, first, our first deck is MLB. MLB is one of the most powerful decks with its with its plus one crit for death within last of the last of the into the soul, and by far the most brickiest. And with fast paced decks being the meta with Ezo, Mail Scrub, and Eradicators, it is hard for MLB to find sweet spot because it is the prettiest thing if you don't have MLB and the blasters you will by far lose because you will by far lose however if you get the blasters you have still you don't you don't know that you can still win because of the bad BGs you cannot BG stall them then finishing finish them off next turn finish them off within the next turns so that is why MLB is still, it's still the one because of its crit and its retire with its multi attacks. However, the, it is the most brickiest deck, most brickiest or the second most brickiest. However, it is still strong, that's why I put it in tier 1. Next deck is Tokuyomi at the Vanguard, 20, Vanguard 0 2020 Championship Fall. We have seen multiple competitors use Tokuyomi. And I think because it's one of the most competitive decks because competitive players take it slow, um, cal calculate. Or with Sukuyomi, you can not you already know what you will draw, what you will check. And because of Cards of Faithful Angel, Oracle Guardian Blue Eye, and Cards of Dark Cat, Secretary Angel, you can go through your stack easily. So, however. Again, fast paced decks are the meta right now. So, Tsukuyomi doesn't, it's not fast paced, however, it's slow, so that's why I'm putting mid tier 2. Amatera is one of the slowest decks and by far one of the weakest. OTT has one of the weakest units that you don't have. Um, they probably have no chance of actually beating against one of the. Er once again, Eradicators, Ezo, and Mouse so I so that's why Matarazu is lacking a bit. However, if they use the White Hair of Imabot deck, I think it still have a chance. However, I think it still lags behind against the turret deck, so that's why I will put it in tier 3. PBO. Hmm. PBO is still I PBO I still see in the current ladder. Um, I still actually lose to it because um, because there are like the uh, PBO is PBO three crit with the persona blast and Taka Blast a dragon with a car with combo the stats are counter charge. So I think. Um, like this, PBO and Tsukuyomi is one of the top tier 2 decks, I know middle tier 2 decks, and the bane of all existence as of tier 1, probably the best pick right now, because Azul has an easy counter for for Eradicators and even Mills um, first they now have the Blaster Spirits which can easily, for Maelstrom, can easily delete their rear guards or they can easily delete their multi-attackers, their Mantis and Basil. For Eradicators, even if you retire them, they will still come back. So that's why Ezo is one of the most powerful decks. It can also filter throughout your, it can filter throughout your decks, putting your, getting out of your and sectors and putting out, and putting and have a great feast just on the deck. So that's why it's good filtering, it has good consistency, synergy with its units. And if you, even if you play the as a searcher and the Griff engine, it still have that consistency. 
Kom Jayla. Kom Jayla as a monster that is not really like this, which is used in Ansel actually as a sort of finisher instead of Platina because Platina oh Platina is the second finisher. Kong Jailer is like the first when the opponents at like four and you want to finish it there. I don't know how that works. However I know that Kong Jailer is being used like a substitute for Platina as like that but I don't know. However Kong Jailer as a boss unit not really that used I think it's slow, it's clunky, so they're three at best. Um, Shadow Blue, Paul Duke, they're three um, behind Amaterasu because the whole point of all the ver the version, the Shadow and Gold version of it is that you swing with you unboosted and that the triggers them boost with your boost with the boost with your end boost attack so you could get at least one or two pitches however the problem is we there are tons of cross rides within the current meta platina and platina pvo cross ride mlb semi cross ride the this whole the end the blood the unlimited break the yusha glory are all are all boss rides so swipe so blue cannot get okay so cowgirl cowgirl is still used competitively and um i still see cowgirl within the ladder however not that used this is probably still tier 2 because it's still slow however it is still rewarding when you keep up with the pace of Next is the blood. The blood is tier two at best. Blood is finally shape as a red finisher. Um, you can pair it up with the Ryan's and Sheedens to put it at five. Then hit with your other regular to get it to get rid of a PG. Then hit the entire front row with the blood skill. So yeah. Next is Dungari. Hmm. Dungari is. Here, between Platina and MLB that I put Dungri between MLB because of it of its starter it has great synergy with the first Dungri and Dungri cross and the uh, unlimited because you can get the PGs, the Stormies, the Rhymes, the Shedens all of the things that you need and unless you're playing against like I don't know Zeal and Eradicators and the Blood you cannot get rid and you cannot get rid of roll plus if you start with dungaree you can easily you can easily cross right the next turn get full quick get rid of the pgs and just like that bada bing bada boom you can easily win with dungarees and now with electric shaper you can use dungaree with dungaree is a great counter for alpha force if you cross right with electric shaper then you still you can do you can destroy the diamantis and basin. So yeah, Dango is probably the least hype of the two, however the most powerful out of the two cross two ultimate break of the previous set set in. Great Dayusha. Um this is pretty rough. Great Dayusha is probably this with the Yusha it, it is an easy crit it can easily fuel you out of your PGs um, because of its no cost crit and also with the brand new PG mechanics you cannot stall or you cannot stall so next turn you can probably be deleted however it is slow it doesn't have great these PG soldiers so that's very really slow, it, it is inconsistent. And plus when you use low user skill you will have nearly no support, nearly no cards, no support. 
that motorcycle. Mm. So that's why I think they use a uh, sturdy. Mm, However, you can still put the port and it can still match up. However, I don't see, I don't see people use it. Mm, I don't know. Tier two probably bottom tier two. Luigi, slow as ever. Probably right here. Luigi skill, which is plus plus ten k is then plus two create is good for the brand new Luigi mechanics. You can install them at free. However, the 15 solo is pretty much bad. If they can make it like 10 solo, 12 solo, it could be decent. However, 15 solo, and this is one of the and the deck breaks pretty easily. So I think, yeah, Luigi is bad. Not that bad. However not consistent enough to match up with the current beta right now. Um, Dudley's and bad ends. Probably put it here. Why I put it here? Because of bad ends break right. And if you pair it with the Infanto, you can, I think you can survive. However, you have let, you are not less likely to survive a bad end turn. So that's why I put this here because it is consistent multi attacks. Even though it's not, even though it has not retired, it is still consistent. It is, it is powerful. And even if you pull on, like, pull some magic, some magic numbers, they can. Bad end turns are still one of the most scariest things, and you can easily lose with that. However, unless if you are at four or five. However, if you are at, let's say, um, 3 and they, and you rush them, and you rush them like, with eradicators, this is the top deck. Okay, if you are at 3, you have a chance to survive. However, balance is one of the most powerful decks within the current meta. This sad that nobody nobody uses that much however it is still good um looky i st i lose to this guy once however it is still so they just rush me no pgs like that however it is still good probably hmm, probably one of the top of the tier three that if it is consistent with multi attacks, you can create um, cards like Tensi Princess in the Night Sky and my right. I don't know. The one that searches for your DB4 presses, the one that searches for your, for your card, the one that searches for your Alice, but the piece it's not good. And look the years, let me create that first on the board. Yeah, pretty good. Um, cool. Cool is. Not that decent. Bottom tier two, I guess. Top tier three. Um. Mm, bottom tier two because the tech that people that the tech doesn't use much is putting on your pieces as boosters, then budget your units. However, with that, um, I think it is a risk to take and. Yeah, so for Paul, it is still slow, however with, however, with its engine that easily draw when you are in your core ride, you can easily go and with the piece it can easily pressure you, so I think it is still viable, however you are less likely to win, because you might go into your heels and your PG. You might go into your heels, your PGs. However, you with the fast pace that once again you cannot keep up. So next is Glowing Maelstrom. Hmm. I have to look at this uh, second. Um because one exit more as well because of its because of its crazy skill of counter plus one then easily get back all of your intercepts and two um 
you have easy doctor charges for this deck with crit. So yeah. So one you have you can easily break in all of your the wave cards to easily draw power. Even if you play crit you can still have cards like the brain, um silver time witch, like that. And third you have cover charge which is one of the most powerful cards that have been ever released here in Zero Map that I think I'm exaggerating with. However, one of the most useful Outforce doesn't have that. And this is a counter blast heavy deck. You have Glory Hillsworth, you have Diamantis in Basil, and also if people doesn't have Diamantis in Basil, they still have the Lysander, which, which is yeah, like that. However, however, this deck is so one of the most powerful because of its guard respect. Um, if you don't have good trees, you can still lose. So yeah, its guard respect really pushes it up. Really pushes it up. Um, next is Polaris. Polaris has been seen in play in the qualifiers, um, if I mean even against MLB, because of his high draw power, um, probably here, top tier two. Uh, Polaris, the blood are still in, are in the same playing field. However, Polaris is kind of the slow but still fast. It's decent in rank, it's decent in, in even competitive because of its high draw power because of its units are cards like Focal Chicken, Monoculus, Pinoculus, um, Handscape for easy filtering. Yeah, it is pretty much very consistent unless you don't draw your Polaris, however you still have your Leo Pond. And yeah, one of the most really decent decks, however it cannot keep up because of its, because of the deck of because most of the decks are retired, multi attack, so Polaris doesn't even keep up. And also, its cost right numbers because cards like Coco Chicken, if they don't have booster, they will still lose. Yeah, so next is, oh wait, just let's put this. Though, this Tachikaze is one of the, one of the worst cards in Zero right now because of it. Killing off your own regret for power. Um, in the TCG, where intercepts are just uh, optional, not necessary, you can use your intercepts to for power. However, in this game, where intercepts are the only line of defense except for PGs, you cannot even use them. You need to destroy your boosters, and boosters are also important to get rid of magic number two. Yeah, magic class like cash. Mega Colony counter for Aqua Force. However, if they have re if they have released Mega Colony within the first um, month of Aqua Force, um, before Ultimate Break, probably so. Probably is here. Still is even though it's not that powerful, it is still great counter. Get here. Gamsula, the Liberators. Liberators in this set is probably not that bad. I still lose to them like pretty I still lose them however their support I need I have few reasons for you for liberators to be at the bottom tier two or top tier two. One, they only have one form of attire. Um, to its consistency and its consistency is bouncy. I mean, the only deck that you could do is the uh, limit break for about the top two cards of your deck card, the uh, rare limit break for one, and cancel up where you go for where you go for the limit break for one card, the rare card which you call two from the deck, and you use it. However, if you However, if you're once again 
once again, have cards, have intercepts in the best of me. I mean, what's the point of a power boost? Cancel that is made for following up your regards and using your cards to defend. However, intercepts and pages are the only cards to defend with. So that's why it can stop. The, recent, the brand new mechanics that have been introduced in Zero really killed like the liberation phase. Probably. Hmm. probably here because it is still more consistent and still more fast is than to be able however it's the intercept is the problem even if you have blast of blade it's a still got kind of blast heavy and the only counter charger you get is strip which is not even a liberator ordinance hmm. simply for play this you want another hemi pretty much one of the most powerful cards right now same probably same place at Liberators because the only cards you have a chance with multi attack is it will another healing Melissa and Kaomi. Which is eight triple eight triple arts and four double arts expensive. And also if you want to pull out four attacks if we do another enemy do another enemy skill is at main phase however you need at battle phase so you need to break with the vehicle however when you however mm, wait. yeah yes you want other human that him however multiple player uses the deck of Artemis and vehicle which doesn't remove any regards however you only put in two attacks it is decent, not that powerful though with when compared to the one however it can still hold up if you have the right card. And also the problem with Artemis is easy go to your deck. You can soul charge your heals, you can soul charge your pages and you do not have any points of defense. I've seen multiple plays, multiple fights against Artemis and they all go to their deck really fast. They can go from like 20 then to 10, 15 to 6, like that. It is, it goes to your deck. Most of your minor deck is 30. I think most Genesis player deck are eradicated. Uh, probably here. First, Quantic Buster Dragon, Frame Break, break, break Red Over Bowing Sword, pretty much grants you a free break. Um, I rather get Dragonic Descendant. Free Restand with Counter Blast 1 and Discard 2. You can draw 2 back. I mean, one of the most powerful, these two are the most powerful cards within the game. So I think that they can hold up, they can hold up within all of this below them. However, with Lorenz from the Guard Rig and Azul's Rejuvenating Intercepts, um, And still pair up in comparison this three can do like oh this 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 like this because they're like in the same playing field huh? with eradicators having multi attacks left and right burning to your pages will descend it and conflict buster plus from with garden spirit and multi attacks with diamonds and basil and basil and as well with having multi attack with the blast for spirits, have uh, easy filtering for easy getting of triggers and your PGs and many more. Very consistent. Uh, this deities, and actually, I'm going to put this deities um, ethics illuminal and ethics flower. I think probably the other break right next. Um, right here. I put this in tier 2 hmm. Let me rearrange this a little bit huh. I, I think The ethics break ready is Pretty one of the most essential cards That you need to have However if you don't have it You can, you can break And 
Hello, Mom. Hello, Mom. Let's just head back to to the here, the retire unit here, the multi attacks. Because even though it have multi attacks, so I don't know what that person was well known plan for it. Multi attacks, it um, let me think about this. It can easily break and the best thing that they're at is the worst thing is their weakness right now because one they don't they cannot search for their pgs um two they easily break because without ethics but you can get full on combo plays in ethics plow if you break if you don't have ethics you, you will lose probably you will lose because you cannot ride on top of ethics anymore you have to ride on blast and blast which is Bad within the ground climbing, so that's why I think. However, when ethics pop off, ethics blow, ethics alone now, it can do massive damage. I mean, ethics blow. However, ethics alone now, I don't know. People doesn't use ethics alone now that much yet. However, with ethics blow, it can kill you so much. So yeah. So, so let me do some rearranging a bit and I will see you guys back. Okay, so we are back. So here are my few arrangements. I put blood and put blood the top tier 3 deck instead of Polaris. However, which they are still in the same thing too. However, the blood is easy in retire and it can attack him with, it, with, a, whole f with a whole front row with Vermilion. And, and it's a half crit. While Polaris, even if you are full when you push your bid, if even if you are full, you can still have your multi attacks. However, it is still it doesn't compare to the blood with it. Is he full wide and it can easily attack you for the regard? So yeah, I think we multiple ways that it can multi attack Polaris have two while the blood have three it doesn't stand up to Polaris doesn't stand up to this because of its first blood is used as a finisher Polaris you just right onto it there is no finisher that can easily kill your opponent wow yeah so what about it I think I don't know Polaris is powerful, however not, however slow. That is fast, however counter blast heavy, which is pretty much one of its problems. However, mm, yeah, the blood is top tier two. Next is I put Coral down to tier two because even though it is consistent, even though the crit engine is pretty good, it is probably does not compare because. It bounces to the rear guards and wait, no, wait, wait, wait. yes it bounces to your rear guards and what unit that you can bounce it can be your back one or your front row your intercepts that has skills when they bounce you can get so so you can counter you can get cards however that means that you can be multi attack easily so that's why I think Coral is top tier 3 and I will be, I will place with Spike Will. I switch the places of MLB and Spike Will because you can, there is a slim, slim chance you can survive a bad enter. I can, if you have all the pages in your hand, you can survive it. However, however, if you do not, and they have all their pages in their hand and they can finish you next turn yeah um yeah spike rules over mlb however mlb the problem with the mlb is it can push you to five and it doesn't guarantee it cannot guarantee that he has a pg and plus mlb with one of the, being one of the most brickiest decks you need to have mlb first then your defensive options left you will mulligan your beach up for blasters and needle. So yeah. 
so that's the kind of the MLB mentality. So yeah, ML Spike was big. Spike was is much more better than MLB. I don't know what this is. Nagori uh, and Spike was probably in the same playing field. So here are my here is my third is. I want to see yours in the comments down below. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.